All right, off we go. This thing is so fun. And I was terribly wrong, so don't do that. These are ready to rumble. Time to put the ceiling on. In order to install them, positive to positive, of course. Hey guys, welcome back to the van build. If you watched the video from last week, you definitely heard me say this. And if all goes well, next week you will see my solar setup. I am really excited for that. And unfortunately, this happened. These are my solar panels. And this is all of the other stuff. Oh my gosh. This is my charge controller. Shattered. So, we have a new plan this week. I might need to return it. Oh, ah, that hurt my ear. I'm a little bit nervous that since I purchased my solar setup as a kit, I might have to return it as a kit. I'm not sure yet, I just emailed them yesterday. So, no solar for this week. So in this video, you will see me frame and install my ceiling as well as run all of my puck lights. If you've been keeping up with the van build, you know that these puck lights need to be run in parallel rather than in series. And I'm hoping to show you guys exactly how I'm doing that because there aren't many resources out there that are step-by-step -step how to set up your puck lights for a van build, right? We couldn't find anything. Okay, you know the plan, I know the plan, Akilah knows the plan. Let's get to work. All right, first things first is I need to head to Home Depot, my second home, and pick up the framing pieces that I wanna use for my ceiling. All right, off we go. I just got my wood, so I picked up one by threes. I am now looking for a bit for my puck lights. Let's go over this really fast again. So this is my RivNut tool. What this will do is it will insert this into a piece of metal that you can't access the back of. For instance, my ceiling. So this is a threaded nut cert. This gets placed into a hole while my riv nut tool helps to crimp this little piece behind the metal, making it super secure. Once this is inserted, a bolt gets threaded through. This adds a ton of strength in order to insert your riv nut correctly. You wanna open this all of the way. Once this is opened all of the way, I don't know how to hold this. You can thread on your nut cert. Inserting it. <laughs> I'm struggling. Okay, that was harder. <sighs> Should've been. Okay, then this screws out. And then, this is what it looks like. Then I'll just drill the hole in the wood, put that bolt through. This thing is so fun. I need to use my drill bit and make that middle hole a little bit bigger so I can stick my rivet in. Got my drill bit. Wow, I'm really glad that didn't just grab some of my hair. That would've been really bad. I dislike doing this. Oh yeah. All right, they're in. What I'm gonna do now is measure out where I need each of my holes drilled. If you watched my garage video, you'll know that I eyeballed the um, the drills, the drills. I eyeballed where I thought my nut certs were, and I was terribly wrong, so don't do that. You said let's jump on the bus and take a ride downtown. Well, I don't know about that. All right, we'll see how this Can goes. You help me first to get these boxes down. Well, I don't know All right, we're, we're figuring it out. So, and by we, I mean me. Just me. Wow, it's way hot. You said whichever you feel like doing first, I said, well, I don't know about that. Oh, would you look at that? See how flush that is? Can you see how good that looks? Oh, sure, yeah. Not going anywhere. Wow, that's really hot. This was just sitting in the ow sun. Oh yeah. All right, basically I'm gonna do that same process for the next two. So I'll catch you in a few. And check it out. All three are on. Now I'm going to move on to framing my fans. So the way that this one by three sits here, if I frame my fan using two by twos, it'll be pretty perfect. What I'm gonna do is liquid nail a two by two across here 
And then with my Craig jig, I'll attach two by twos from here to here and then across and across. So I need to go get some two by twos. Okay, really good news. Uh, Ran and G got back to me. Oh, that's locked, dang it. And it turns out that they are going to send me a brand new charge controller, which means I can install my solar next week. Anyway, back to the ceiling. I got what I need for the rest of my framing, so let's finish that up. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, two by two going across, that was a really stupid idea, definitely not gonna work because two by twos don't flex. Okay, my new plan is this. I cut a one by three in half, and I'm going to try my very best to attach it with liquid nails. I should probably do it not over my floor. Tastes good to be drinking all of the honey sweet brew of ours. I pop in a painted cup, right in the sky like a firefly. Like a firefly. This is where my two by two is going to sit. That green sharpie line, if you can see it. I'm gonna take that much off, creating a little bit of a tapered piece. And then I'm gonna get this ready with the Craig jig. These are ready to rumble. Cup, I will paraglide across the sky. Let flowers and tiny hearts shape in a line in the cup of ours. So sweet like a honeybee can buzz around a honey tree. I pop in a painted cup, right in the sky like a firefly. Mm, like a firefly. Wow, that feels so good. Okay, now we just have to do the back fan. So I'm gonna show you what I did do that was a stupid idea. Beautiful rib nuts. Um, holes I did not have to drill. What I'm gonna do, and what I should have done from the start, I'm going to use liquid nails, like I did at the front, and clamp them to this back metal. Okay, this is what I got. Up, up, up in a painted cup, I would pour my love from a cloud above. So bright I can see the light that's taking you up and above the blue sky. Tastes good to I'm gonna leave the small gap here in case I do want that to be the home for my flyers. Like a firefly. Solid. Now I need to do this framing. I'm gonna do it the exact same way that I did the front one. Alright, I'm gonna take those clamps off. Hopefully everything stays in place so I can do my ceiling today. That worked great. Highly recommend. Time to put the ceiling on. So this is what I picked up. What I'm gonna do now is take a few hours and stain and protect my shiplap. I picked up some special walnut and I am going to put a little bit of my dark walnut stain in this stain. And then I'm going to do a top coat of this with me and Akila living in the van, we're gonna be doing a lot of adventures, a lot of outside time. There will be moisture in the van. I'm really making sure that everything is as protected as it can be, shall we? I'm gonna make sure I measure everything out so that if I want to do the same stain and if I run out, I know exactly what I did. This is a half a cup. I like it. I'm going with it. I made sure that I picked out boards with a lot of unique knots and green, and I love it. So check it out. In the misty bright moonlight, I were told when the storm is raging in your head, when you feel there's nothing more ahead, the hills they seem all green, but they hide all the monsters. Love, 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 love this mix of stain. Now that this stuff is pretty dry, I'm going to go over it with this oil-based clear satin. The best part about this is that it seals out water and it's mold and mildew resistant. Hi! early no it's raining because i knew that there was rain coming look at that shoot i brought akila out here because obviously it's much cooler than normal and she just decided to help herself to some bones that were in the front seat did you just get that yourself can you stay for a week or so just 
watch the corn grow in the fields I don't know what's on your mind But I know that it's something about you and me I made a little bit of a mistake, I think. Here, I'll show you. If you notice, this one is a lot longer because I started to recognize that when I put the final piece of my fan in, that makes it look really nice and clean, the edge of it might not actually cover these that are short. I think it should be okay. If not, I'm gonna be extremely disappointed. I think it should be okay. It'll be very close. So these are my puck lights. They are 12 volt LED specific for a DC system. I will link these below in order to install them. They're really easy. These just have these springs that you lift up, you'll slide them into the hole, and then these springs come back down and just hold it into place, which means that they're really easy to change out if you need that as well. So this would go in first. Oh yeah, check that out. Awesome, and then if I need to replace it, I can literally just pull it out. How you doing, Akila? My arms are really tired. Okay, this morning I finished putting in my lights. I just got back from the dentist. That's why I'm talking like this. But I gotta keep moving on the van, you know? This is gonna be quite the video. So the next step is to wire all of my lights. When I stayed on home, I need you on my fire. I want you to know that every time you're away, I long for you. Okay, so my mouth is no longer numb, just hurts a little bit. And I think I have some stuff figured out and I'm ready to finish the wiring. But first what I want to do is go over how this is going to be connected. So I have spent hours and hours and hours in the last few months understanding the electrical, understanding solar, how the power comes in, what the inverter does, all of that stuff. And one of the most challenging things for me was figuring out how to hook up the lights. Do not hook up your LED puck lights in series. If they are 12 volt DC LED, hooking them up in series will not work. So what I'm going to do now is draw out the diagram of my specific lighting in the van. Hopefully after this, it will make a little bit more sense. Here we go. <laughs> this is going to be the front. This is where the headlights are. I am going to draw out the lights that I have. You guys know that I have one offset fan here and I have one more centered fan here. Here are my lights. One, two, three, and then I have four lights over here. This is my sliding door. This is from a top view, looking down from the top of my van. Each of my puck lights are going to have a positive and a negative wire. Red represents positive. Black, negative. Here's my puck light. All of them have a red positive and a black negative. This has two wires. This is specifically for a DC system. This right here near my back left wheel well, just to make this easy, we're gonna call that my power. I know that I'm gonna have my switch right here. That's gonna represent my switch. From my power, I am running positive and negative. Oh God. So I ran 14 gauge wire through my walls where I know my switch will be. From there, your positive wire is going to come around, it's going to connect with your positive of your first puck light. From there, the positives will connect to the next puck light, and so on. Negatives will also connect with each other. This is what the connections look like, but when I'm actually placing them in my van, I'm gonna want a lot of the connections towards the outside of my van, but I will show you all of that later. This is going to be a three-way connection, all of these. That blue represents this piece. So let's pretend that this wire right here represents this wire, my positive, 
and this is going to connect to my puck light here so I'm going to connect these two I'll, t I'll show you what this connection looks like later but right now I want to show you how this um, three-way connector works so pretend that my puck light is already connected to my 14 gauge wire this first groove goes all the way through where the second, a little bit farther in, actually has like a, a stop in it. It has an internal stop. So you place your wire into this. It's gonna hang out in that first groove. And then you're gonna take the wire that you want to include and you don't wanna strip any of this wire. Instead, you're gonna slip this in until it stops at that internal stop. The next thing that needs to happen is this metal piece needs to be pressed down through both wires, creating that connection. So I'm gonna hold these wires in place, grab my pliers from there, I'm going to press this metal piece down through both of those wires. So it will look like this. From there, I'll close this cap, protect that metal. And there you have it. This is what it'll look like in the van. I do want to quickly explain why parallel is so important verse series. This is energy, okay? Energy is coming in. Now, these electrons, if they want to, they can go this way and pass through this light, or they can continue going through any of them. Which means also, if this light goes kaput, the system is still gonna work, and you will know exactly which light to, to fix. So even though this connection isn't happening, the electrons have an option to continue going. That is unlike a series setup, where if one light goes out, all of them go out. That's like the, the old time Christmas lights. But now, I'm going to get to showing you the real thing, in my van as I do it. I have my long wire that is essentially going to be running and connecting all of the positives um, with this 14 gauge wire. So right now what I'm doing is tucking this in my wall. Oh my gosh, Linnea. So like we talked about, each of these puck lights has a negative and a positive wire. This is 22 gauge wire. So here I have two male connectors that are for 22 gauge wire. You need to make a solid connection here. And then take your crimper and crimp that metal down. You can get some connectors like this that have heat shrink right here. Those are the ones I intended to get. I ended up not getting those. So what I am gonna do is add some electrical tape just to make sure. Okay, so we've got that connector on here. I now want to connect my puck light to my 14 gauge wire, positive to positive, of course. So I now want to connect my 22 gauge wire to a piece of 14 gauge wire. Now the reason that I'm being a little bit generous with my wire, I wanna make it really easy on myself to change it so I can pop this out and have enough room to string some of my wire through, change the connections and pop a new one back in. On this end, I'm going to put the female connector on. First, I'm gonna strip this wire, and you just want, oh, I don't know, that much stripped. Boop. Cool. Uh, oh, yeah, look at that. So this is ready to be connected here. But now I need to make this connection here. So this is where that three-way connection comes in that we talked about. Here's my tap splice. The main wire is gonna go in here. And then I'm gonna add this wire in here. And then while all these are nice and snug in there, I'm gonna grab my pliers. Just like that. So now all three are connected and I'll just close this little cap. We have our 14 gauge wire over here connecting to our puck light. Just like that. So now if this light goes out, I can just take these apart and it'll be a really nice easy connection with a new puck light. That took me so long to figure out, and I mean so long. Let's just hope that when I actually have power, everything works, you know? So I'm actually gonna just focus on all of the positive right now, and then I'm gonna run and do my negative. I've said it many times, I know. I would change my ways, I know for sure. When all the crows decide to meet, they settle down beneath my feet I've You can see I've done all of my positive connections um, and now I'm going to run all of my negative. I did just want to do one at a time because it simplified things for me. 
so be so I am going to go ahead and finish connecting all of my negatives in the same way that I did the positives and then I think I'm done. We got nothing to be scared of. I'd rather be with I'm not an electrical expert. I actually just learned all this stuff, so keep that in mind. Firing is all done. So I have all the negatives connected and all of the positives are connected. Each of those are then connected to their own positive and negative wires that run along the entire circuit. Now I'm just going to go back with all my wires and go through with some conduit and make sure everything is really secure and safe and then you will see me put up the rest of my ceiling. The only thing that was for me and I saw the angels coming down And they sang a song and sang you loud And I still remember parts of it And the yellow glory as we live Won't you be? I am officially done with my ceiling And wow, I feel so good <laughs> It feels like a little cabin to me I love it, I love it, love it, love it. I'm gonna also cross my fingers that how I did the lighting works. What should happen is my lights should turn on. I have my fuse in. I have not been this nervous in an extremely long time. When we wait, <gasps> hear the birds and see the sun. Oh my God. Side by side, our fears are done. Oh, the good times just begun. My lights work. Oh, we know we have this whole time. Found what we're I can not put for it all on the right. Oh my god. Cold is crazy, but things are fine. Wow. Do you and I the future? So I turned the flip the switch on and they didn't work. <clears throat> and then I messed with the dimmer. And they worked really well. Oh my god. What I, what I want to express right now in this like really raw emotion state is that you guys can do anything. <laughs> that sounds so cliche. But truly, like if I am able to have working LED lights that I wired all by myself, like truly if you're willing just to put in the work and to learn stuff, you can do whatever the hell you want. I like. I am so beside myself. As you saw, my lights work and everything has been going really well. And now that the electrical stuff is getting figured out and things are working, my videos will be back on track. Hopefully every Sunday I will be posting. This just took me a long time to figure out. And like always, let's talk about the price. The cost of my van build so far up until this video is $3,014.86. If you found any piece of this video helpful or entertaining, make sure to give it a like, subscribe, comment. I think we'll just leave it at that, huh? So we will see you next week. When we wake, hear the birds and see the sun. Side by side, our fears are done. All oh, the good times just begun.